All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and hop right into game number two. All right, so opponent can decide if they want to start first or not. All right, let's see what he decided. Opponent decided to go first. Obviously, I am going to keep this hand because I have a power plant, a mine, a sylvan sprang, and I have a chromatic star. So obviously there I got everything I need to make sure I can get Tron online on turn number three. Okay, let's see. I keep opponent keeps as well. Plays Blink Moss turn one. Oh Graph Digger's Cage, which for me I thought was a little bit crazy. But the fact that my opponent had to go sideboard a card in to try to stop my Emrakul from entering the battlefield, I thought it was amazing because not too often you play a janky crazy deck and your opponent tries to sideboard something specifically to turn off your win condition. Which, hey, for me, right there that said that Tron Walkers is now officially a deck that my opponents have to be weary of. Alright, go ahead and play the star, fast turn. I also got the doubling season in hand now, and I drew another piece of Tron. So I'm like, oh shoot, that's natural Tron right there. Alright, and then I decided, you know what, let me go ahead and play a land. I mean, let me go ahead and sacrifice the star, that way I get a green mana. Then I could turn around and play Sylvan Scrying. And what Sylvan Scrying would do for me is allow me to go find my Cascading Cataract. The stand right here. What Cascading Cataracts does is it makes it to where I can pay 5 mana and tap it to where I can add 5 mana of any color, which means whatever color I need for my Planeswalkers at that point, I can go ahead and find all of that. So here I went ahead and passed turn afterward. Opponent he used mana to play a Hangerback Walker. And then he used the, the graft ability to put a 1-1 one, one counter from his... What is this land? Land of War Reborn. And then take that counter and put it on Hangerback Walker. So now it's a 2-2. Two, two. And when it dies, it makes Thopter tokens. 1-1 one, one flame Thopter tokens. Equal to the amount of counters that was on it. And then he played an Arbound Ravenger. Which for me, I was like... That's a sigh of relief because I'm seeing no infect damage on board yet. So, my turn played the tower. And now I'm like, oh. I can go ahead and pay four and put Karn Great Creator out. Turn off his artifacts. And go ahead and search for something. I think here. I was looking for a Sorcerous Spyglass to use against his Ink Moss. That way, for sure, he can't get Infect Damage in. But, like you guys can see here, I had sideboarded Liliana's Avail out of my deck. So, Sorcerous Spyglass, nowhere to be found. So, I had to find another option. And then I looked at it and I realized my opponent does not have the Ozoloth, which means that he cannot save counters from creatures and then put it on blink on ink moss afterwards so walking ballista is what it was went ahead and played walking ballista for one um what i was gonna do here is i was gonna block and then deal damage to a creature because if you think about it once i declare a blocker the damage can't get through unless my opponent has trample so in this case, what I did was just wait for my opponent to do what they're doing, play the walking ballista as well, and I was like, man, I don't want them to have a walking ballista because I know they can take the, the counters from other things and put onto ballista and just ping me for damage and win the game that way. But here in this case, my opponent does not have anything to make his walking ballista stronger. So here, since I'm pretty sure both of them were going to my card, yeah. What I decided to do was block, declare my walking ballista as a blocker, and then 
Use walking ballista to ping his arcbound revenger. And then once it dies, it has modular 1, which means it can put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature. Oh, see? I'm even surprised by the play that I made there. I had decided not to kill the walk kill the Arcbound Ravenger just because of the modular one. So I chose to deal one damage to my opponent. I know that sounds like a crazy ridiculous play, but that was the best choice that I could make at the time and that is why I went ahead and did it. Okay, so after that, go ahead and pass the turn. Back to me. And here I got a Nickel Bolas Dragon God, but I did not have 9 mana on the board. So, I chose to just go ahead and play an Osof Nissa, because that would open me up to playing any permanent that I want. Or any planeswalker that I want. Which is the main point of my deck, so obviously helps. Here I got Golos and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Let's see what my choice was, because I don't know, because those are some good choices. Okay, I chose Golos. The reason for Golos is I can put him out as a blocker for my Karn Great Creator. I can also go fetch some more land, which means that I can make it to where next turn I will have 9 mana and be able to ultimate in one turn. And I went ahead and upticked Karn there, just because I'm trying to keep him from killing it before he attacks me. Because I know attacking is the main win condition he normally has. Here he makes his Ink Moth into a creature. Both Ink Moths into creatures. I think he might have made the wrong one into a creature first. And he goes ahead and attacks me. I think probably all going towards Karn. Yep. That's just because of the Infinity side of his deck though, he needs it online in order to finish the game quickly. And that's dead, and now my opponent is free to do whatever they want again. So, pass it another Arcbond Ravenger. And then pass the turn back to me. And I'm pretty sure you all can tell how this goes. I'll go ahead and say. At first, I was about to tap Cascading Cataracts for mana, which would mean that I would lose one mana. But then I remembered, oh, I have Oath of Nissa on the battlefield, I don't need to use Cascading Cataract. So because of that, I untapped everything, made sure I casted my doubling season first, and went ahead and casted my Samut Detested. And then after casting Samut, I pretty much get my combo pieces. The reason why I choose Jace and Tamio is Jace, of course, allows it to where he can make copies of himself, infinite copies of himself, and an infinite amount of 2-2s. And Tamio allows me to draw a couple cards and then cast cards without paying their mana cost. Fortunate for me, I have Nicol Bolas Dragon God in hand, which means that I am now able to make copies of Dragon God once I put it onto the field, so I get it out. I make a couple copies of Dragon God. Make a couple copies of Dragon God again. Because at this point in time, I had decided to myself, you know what? I'm going to get, win against this guy who's playing Infect by dealing Infect damage to him. 
So Jace goes out, Ugin the Spirit Dragon activates. And at this point I'm just gonna go search for more things to, you know, keep this rolling. And what happens here, as soon as I got to my opponent's deck, I was like, I guess I could just choose any card. And that is when my opponent quit the game. But still a win for me because even just looking at the board right now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six ways of winning the game. Seven if you want to count Jace because I can cast Emrakul and take an extra turn and swing for 15 damage and have Annihilator six. He had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten permanents. But yeah, that was game number two against Infect. I will be back momentarily. Okay, I need to put up this image and then I can put that camera on. But yeah, I'll be back momentarily with my most fun game that I've had. Eh, I would say in the last past two days. But this taught me something about my deck that I didn't know. And with finding that out, it's potentially something that I'm definitely going to do more often to show my opponents just how powerful this deck is. Hey, even with me trying to keep up with it, to keep up with these matches that I'm about to play, I had to sit down and I... I had to use a calculator, so that's just an example of what you all are about to see. But this was game two against Infect. I ended up winning 2 0. And they were close games because I do know Infect is pretty fast. And typically, Infect with hmm, landfall spells that, you know, if they had a land into the battlefield or whatever this turn, the creature gets plus x plus x more typically those infect decks are ridiculously fast so when i saw infect i was hardly hoping that that's not i would not what i would be seeing i think the affinity version of infect though is a little a little bit slower but the main thing is it has multiple ways that you can win because if the infect damage you're going through doesn't work they can easily transition to just dealing direct damage with Walking Ballista. Or they can also just, you know, use creatures to swing in. Because Steel Overseer is making everything stronger. And the fact that the Ocelot saves all the counters from creatures that died. That turns into something that's a force to be reckoned with. Because imagine a Walking Ballista. And then your opponent's like, oh, well, yep, let me go ahead and put 10 extra counters on this Ballista and swing with it. And then just continue for 10 extra damage and you lose. So yeah. That's just an idea of how good I think Infect is. But I'll be back, peeps. Go ahead and set up for the next video.